Welcome back to Celebrity Radio. It's Alex Belfield talking to some of the biggest stars in the world and some of my favourite people. And we've got one for you today. Sherry Shepard, how are you? I'm wonderful. How are you? I'm delicious, but not as good as you because Ah. you are fabulous. What I love about you is you've got an opinion and you know how to say it. There aren't many people like that anymore. Well, you have to, you know, it's so you have to learn not to be bothered by everybody. I can't carry the weight of the world on my shoulders. So I have my opinion as long as my family's okay with me and God's okay with me, I'm good. I think where you shot to fame, although you'd had a huge career before, and we're mm-hmm. going to talk about that in a minute uh, on Broadway and as an actress, The View opened you up to an audience and to exposure that you can't buy. Unfortunately, and I know this from the English version, every word you say is analysed. It must become painful sometimes when you come off air and you've got 75,000 missed calls from lawyers and agents who said, why did you say that? Well, you know, it took me three years to get a tough shell because I used to, as soon as I said something on The View, I would go and see what people thought. And Joy Behar told me, stay off of social media. And she said, Sherry, as soon as you open your mouth, you're going to lose half of your audience, which means no, you, nobody's going to like what you say. You, you're not going to. And the, the moment you try to start being every something to everybody, you're not authentic anymore. So I've learned to. It, it just kind of rolls off my shoulder. Uh, Barbara Walters was really great that if we said something crazy, she'd be like, "Look, you're not apologizing. If you apologize, we're going to be called the I'm sorry show, yeah. and that's not happening." And it is about getting four or five different types of women to all have four or five different types of opinion. The trouble with those shows, though, is when you're all talking at the same time, it can become a bit insane, can't it? It can. And Barbara Walters was always honest about watch the crosstalk. The problem is, you know, when a bunch of women get together, we get passionate about something. We all start talking at one time. We understand what we're saying. A lot of men don't. And it, it, I know it sounds crazy when you're actually looking at us. And Barbara got on us for years. And I don't think it's, I don't think it's gotten any better. And it seems to me, since you guys have gone, that show doesn't have quite the same buzz. There's something about when you get the alchemy of the right team in those shows. And we've certainly seen it in the UK that you need people who are very different. Yeah. If it becomes nice, it becomes boring. I got to tell you, when Elizabeth Hasselbeck would get pregnant and go on maternity leave, (laughs) our ratings would drop because even though there were people who said, I can't stand her, they watched it because they said, what is she going to say today so she can make my (laughs) blood pressure go up? So you're right. It's it's so important. People think that you could, you know, everybody, we have so many shows based off the view, panel shows, and people think you can just throw a bunch of people together and it's going to work. And it doesn't. It's a science that I got to give it to Barbara Walters. She really had a hand in creating and maintaining that show. And it's sad that she's gone as well, because there's something about having that matriarch on the show that holds the whole thing together and gives it a class. It does. Barbara brought a certain cachet to the show. And, uh, you know, I I actually have to say I quite miss being kicked under the table. I quite miss uh, her making the motions of, you know, she'd do that. she'd, She'd make the motion with her neck where she'd like, shut it up, stop it. Or she'd hit me in the hip to, to ask my question. She pushed me to, to go to a better level. So I, I really do miss Barbara because she did. She was the glue and she also gave it a credibility. You know, Whoopi's there, so Whoopi does as well. But Barbara, you know, we when we started having p- politicians come on the show, that was because of Barbara Walters. And it stopped for a moment when she left. So, you know, yeah, Barbara, definitely, it, we missed her. And you mentioned Elizabeth there. I Googled yesterday doing research, and it's interesting, the most viewed clip on YouTube with millions of hits is you and Elizabeth getting into something and you slam her down. And you were able to do that because you have this wit, this ability to be funny. Um, I guess you're born with that because that can't be acting training or any school that can teach you funny. Yeah, I think it was back when I was uh, seven years old and my report card from school said, Sherry's wonderful, but she's the class clown. She won't be quiet, she, but she makes everybody laugh. And that when I first got in trouble for that, my father said, oh, you think you're a comic, do you? And I think it started from there. <laughs> And then we look at your career on Broadway, which is fascinating. I mean, you're a credible actress and a credible TV presenter and a credible comedian. There aren't really many people who get to do all those. What are you? I'm trying to work out. Are you funny? Are you serious? Are you an actress? Or do you like to do everything? I I think I'm all of that. I think I get to I'm very blessed to be able to use all the sides of my of who I am in whatever situation I'm in. But I would say most of it 
is I'm funny. Everything comes from a funny place. Even on The View, I knew what I brought. If there was, if it was really heavy or serious, then I could come in there and bring a little bit of lightness to it. I could bring the smile and say, let's just laugh about it. It's so tense. So mainly everything comes from my funny, even the serious stuff. And we got to find out about you in the UK when you did the thing about the planet being round and all, all right. of that. <laughs> Which is one of the most beautiful clips ever because you keep that straight face. That sort of show can open you up to those huge stories that you can't see them coming. It's like a truck coming down the freeway, isn't it? Well, you know, actually with the, with the comment about me not believing if the earth was round or flat was it was my first week there and I was really nervous. <laughs> now you gotta understand, like I came from being a Jehovah's Witness and Jehovah's Witnesses, we don't, they don't vote. They stay out of the political process. They're very nice. Any Jehovah's Witness you know they're very nice people they don't do a lot of debating and so everything that that I feared I had to do and earlier that morning Barbara Walter said uh, we were talking about evolution versus creationism and she looked in the mirror at me and she says I want to debate my Christian friend and I'm going that's not why I'm on the show I'm on the show to be funny I don't I don't debate so I was already nervous it was my first week or my second week and and I, I literally was zoning out I got adult ADD first First of all, so I'm zoning out and I'm trying to remember, okay, did I pay the cable bill? Did I pay, you know, is the milk expired? I literally, I, and I tell you, I can understand when people black out. All I heard was earth round or flat. I guess I said, I don't know. Cause, cause people tell me that Whoopi was the first to address. I, so they said, you said you didn't know. I don't remember any of that. Then I heard Barbara say something round or flat. And I guess I said from people, they were saying, I said, I don't know. I got to take care of my kid, which sounds like that's what I would say. I'm not denying it. And then, uh, with the, I heard, take a little time to enjoy the view. And Barbara says to me, dear, the earth is round. And I said, I know the earth is round. And she said, well, you said you didn't know. <laughs> I'm thinking it's not that big of a deal. I didn't know this went all around. I didn't know the, the impact of the view. And I didn't know that it went all around the world. Bill Maher said I should be fired and Bill O'Reilly <laughs> had a fit. Wendy Williams said a potato sack could replace me. Like, I just was like, oh my God, it was a brain fart. But I have to tell you, uh, it, Barbara Walters was so wonderful because she came to me and she says, I know you can do this. You just get your ass back up and, and well, she didn't say it that way, but that's what I inferred. <laughs> and she said, you get back up and you get back at that table and do it again. And that's the thing, when you fall, you, you just get back up and do it again. That was one of the best learning experiences I could have had. I could have had had, and I wouldn't have traded it for the world. And by the way, the earth is around. <laughs> it was a beautiful clip. And I guess with YouTube now, you can't get away with anything. 10 years ago, that would have come and that would have gone and nobody would have noticed. It's so funny, you cannot, with social media and retweeting and uh, you cannot get away from anything. It will haunt you to the day you die. <laughs> but it's so very funny because it makes some people so angry and they will come at me on social media because they don't agree with something I said and they will say well at least the earth is round and I answer them back and go are you still on that like my life has moved on and you're still stuck in in 2007 come get a life which makes them even more mad yeah 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 I would love to know what you would think about today's politics, because for us coming into America right now, it has never been more insane. We thought Bush was the topper. We thought he was the funniest. No, I mean, you couldn't even write what's going on at the moment. When we look at Trump and Hillary and all of that, is this one great big joke we're all part of? Or could we really get President Trump? I think somebody above us is having a great laugh at our expense. I think I was one of the first ones to say, don't underestimate Donald Trump. Everyone around me, news people that I knew, uh, very pe people that I respected, kept saying he's a joke. And I kept going, I, you guys don't underestimate, the man is a, a very smart man. Now, businesses may not have lasted, but he's, he's sustained himself this complete time. He's manipulated um, very masterfully the media up until this time. So don't underestimate him. And I am not at all surprised that Donald Trump is where he is. And, and people are saying, no, there's there's no possible way that he can win. There's not enough Muslims, blacks, and everybody else that's gonna vote for him. But if those Bernie Sanders people don't come out and, and get behind Hillary, we, we I, I'm going never say never. We've already made that mistake. 
and I, and, you know, and, and I keep, people say they're going to move. You know, I don't have enough money to move. I got to stay here. <laughs> I'm not Barbara Walters, so what am I going to do? I've got a spare room. Come and live with me. We're going to talk about you as an empire now, because when I look at what you've created, it is extraordinary. I mean, you've got this wig business, for example. It's a huge business yeah. and something that people actually really need and care about. I sell out hundreds of thousands of units on QVC and then about 2,000 beauty supply stores and I'm about to start doing major infomercials. I just feel, you know, when you start something, it has to be something that's, that's you know, indicative of you. And for me, I love talking about hair. I love changing my hair. So that was something that was pretty effortless for me. And I know that women like it. I, I love selling. You know, I say, you got the hair you were born with, now get the hair you want. And it's been pretty successful. So I think that you have to stay true to who you are. And of course, my hair's ludicrous. You know what they say, a rusty roof equals a damp basement. Have you heard that saying? I've not heard that, but I would like to use that. <laughs> uh, you know what? When I go back on The View to fill in for somebody, I'm going to look right at Whoopi and I'm going to say that. And she's going to go, child, who you been hanging with? Tomorrow night, I'm going to be here at the Venetian watching you in lipstick, which is just this wonderful showroom. In fact, the first time I was in there was with Joan Rivers, who I think is one of the greatest female comedians ever. Yes. And what I love about you next week, Lisa's on, you're all so brilliant at it you're not there for tokenism and I love that they've set this up because funny women I think are funnier than anyone you yeah. just have that ability to press that nerve I think that we look at things in, in a different way. I love, you know, Lisa Lampanelli has a certain point of view and, and I have a certain point of view as, as a Chelsea handler. I have the uh, a email that Joan sent to me probably about two weeks before she passed. And it was when I had left The View and she said, Sherry, you will always work. Funny women always work. And I, I've kept that email and I think that's true. There's something about being a funny woman, the lens in which you see things is unlike any other. And I think one day you'll end up with your own huge sitcom because I can imagine Sherry being a huge brand because you've just got that look about you and that personality that's so rare. I do have a sitcom coming out in January on NBC with John Lithgow and it's called Trial and Error. It's a very dark comedy kind of based on how to make a murder and jinx. And that's very funny. I play a woman with five disorders facial blindness, uh, inappropriate uh, emotional reaction. So when they talk about his murder, I start laughing hysterically. I was born with no tear ducts. I have a <laughs> short-term memory loss and I'm dyslexic and I'm part of his legal defense team. They've charged him with murdering his wife. Sounds like I could marry that woman. She's my type of girl. <laughs> That's how I'm telling you. It's a side of me and everything. I'm just like, ah! But I'm so excited to work with Mr. Lithgow, who's a brilliant, brilliant actor. And he watches The View all the time. So we do hot topics in the morning. I love it that you've created this brand and what you do because so few people have an ability to do many things and when you can and can stand on a stage on Broadway, which let's face it, is probably the hardest thing to do anyway because you've got to do it eight times a week and then go on the TV and do what you do. It's, it's only to be admired. Cherry, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. I had a, a wonderful time being with you.